As you know from the Watch Me First video, we assume you've read Chapter 8 with all the details of Dr Elizabeth Pope's Literature Review project. So I'll start with just a quick review of the six stages of the project in Table 8.1 on page 166. The first stage of the project is demonstrated in two videos. Part 1 includes creating the MaxQDO project, adding and organising electronic literature resources, and undertaking initial descriptive coding. Part 2 continues with writing memos, organising the descriptive coding into categories, and writing a first draft. The second stage video reviews, reflects on, and refines what was accomplished in stage 1. Stages 3 and 4 are combined into the next video, which involves adding a second round of literature and managing it in the same way, and then reflecting on all that has been done so far in order to identify themes in the reviewed literature. The final video combines stages 5 and 6, which involves extracting coded data in order to write the second draft of the literature review, and then continuing to add additional literature over time. In this video, I'll walk you through stage one of the case illustration of Elizabeth's exploratory literature review, exploring the literature on interfaith dialogue. You can see in table 8.2 an overview of the steps for the first phase, the preliminary partial literature review. Because phase one, identify and become familiar with resources, was not done in MaxQDA, I'll not be discussing that phase of Elizabeth's project in this video. So to begin phase two, organize and initially categorize all the resources, 2A required Elizabeth to create a new project and import all the marked up electronic resources into it as individual documents. Having created a new MaxQDO project, Elizabeth imported each document one by one. Because I'm showing you a more recent version of Elizabeth's project, you can see that there are already several documents in here. However, I've downloaded a new PDF to add to the project to show you how this is done. You can either import documents using the relevant icon in the Import menu, or, as I'm going to do, by right-clicking on the top level of the document system and choosing to import from there. The document I'm going to import is this one by SNAR, and you can see that it's been renamed according to the naming convention that Elizabeth used for all her documents, which is author, year, and then title. When I click open, the file will be imported into MaxQDA and automatically opened in the document browser. If it initially displays the text quite small, as it has done here, you can use the zoom icon to increase the size and make it more easily readable. Elizabeth's next step was to record the full citation and abstract for each piece of literature in a memo that's linked to the document. Having imported documents, we can sort the list alphabetically, so that it then becomes very easy to find the source you're looking for. But because I've got SNAR's document open, it's emboldened in the list, so it's also easy to see that way. To link a memo to this document, I can either double click in the column for memo links, or I can right click and choose to create a memo, which will automatically be linked. You'll see that the title is automatically given the same name as the document, which is really useful later on when you're looking at memos in the main memo list. In order to find the full citation, Elizabeth actually reopened the document in Adobe and reorientated her screen so that she could see both the memo and the PDF in Adobe side by side. She then found the relevant information and typed it up using the APA citation requirements. I'm just going to paste it in here now. Her next step was to paste the abstract and the keywords into the memo also. When doing that, you'll see that there are hard returns in the paragraph that Elizabeth didn't want there. It's a personal choice, a formatting issue, but what Elizabeth did was to go through and remove all the hard returns so that they were no longer in the memo. She'd then done everything that she needed to do with the link memo at this point. So she could just close it down and you can see that most of the other documents that have been imported have also got linked memos. Hovering over a link memo will bring up in a little flag its name and the beginning of the content of it. 
And from this position, we can just double click to reopen the memo at any time. The next step was to organise the literature into specific subject areas by creating document groups in the document system. This is done simply by right clicking on the top level of the document system and choosing to create a new document group. But I'm not actually going to do that right now because it's already been done in this version of the project and if I scroll down you can see the document groups that have already been created. SNARS document is an empirical study on interfaith dialogue so it fits into that group. To add it all we need to do is to drag it from the top level and drop it into the group. And now you can see that it's stored within that document group with the other empirical studies so far imported. Elizabeth organised every document into, into groups in this way, so that in the end each document was stored in one of these subfolders and there were none left at the top level of the document system. When Elizabeth did this in the first phase of the project, as you can see in table 8.2, she created nine groups. What you see here is the result of editing them down in a later phase so that she ended up with only these five groups organising her literature resources towards the end of the process. Phase 2C was to apply the relevant descriptive codes to segments of the literature sources and to take notes about them. Keep in mind that when working with Max QDA, any highlights or comments you may have made in Adobe don't import over into Max QDA. So if you want to mark up literature by highlighting before starting to code, as Elizabeth did, it will be more efficient to do that using MaxQDA's own highlighting feature. So I'll just show you how to do that. You can select any portion of text that you're interested in, and you've got these various coloured highlighter mark icons to choose from to highlight the text. Doing that turns the text the colour you've chosen and applies it to the code with that name, in this case yellow right at the bottom of the list of codes. Part of the purpose of Elizabeth's literature review was to understand how interfaith dialogue had been studied in the literature previously. This meant that she needed to capture and reflect on things like research questions, research purposes, methodologies, modes of analysis, etc. So I'm just going to scroll down and find a relevant passage. This one, for example, represents part of the purpose of this research. And if she was going to code it as such, she would select it like I've done and then find the relevant code and just drag the code and drop it on the document. If she hadn't already got a code that was relevant for this segment, then she could just right click over the selected segment and create a new code from this position. Elizabeth coded all of the imported PDF documents with descriptive codes in this way. During the first stage of her literature review, this resulted in 141 descriptive codes, which she used to mark the relevant segments of text that she'd identified when reading through each article and highlighting in Adobe. The vast majority of references during this stage of the project were coded with only one descriptive code, not with multiple ones.